Hello, my name is Dr. Wolf. I'm an analyst from YouTube, and you are listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 125. I am your host, Tom Sanzo. Joining me today is James Clark. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hey, James. How are you doing, man? Ah, uh, not bad. Hey, Norman. Have you ever had a certain feeling of deja vu? Oh, I don't mm. know. Probably nothing. Uh, mm. This seems strangely familiar. Yeah, the, the whole scenario, the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? It's like it happened before. Yeah, but anywho, um, we also have Rom. Hey, Rom. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Rom. How are you doing, man? Slowly but surely, melting like a candle, but it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> so it's one of those hot days, eh? Yep. All righty then. So I hope you have a fan. And also our guest for this week is Dr. Wilf. Greetings, everyone. Glad to be here. Hello, Dr. Wolf. How are you doing? I'm doing fairly well, I think. I have a sense of deja vu. <laughs> no, we don't. Mm-hmm. Well, probably we'll spoil it at the end, but for now, we'll just keep it our little secret. But anywho, Dr. Wolf, how are you? How are you? I think I'm doing fairly well. I'm looking forward to BronyCon not too long from now, and... Still chugging away and making a lot of videos for my channel. Oh, you're going to BronyCon? That's awesome. Indeed. Will this be your first con? It, it will be my second convention I've ever been to, but the first since I started a YouTube channel, so I have no idea how many people there will recognize me. So it's going to be a very new experience in many different ways, especially since the first convention I ever went to was only about three or four hundred people, and this one is expected to be over ten thousand people. What? <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Wow. Um, good luck, and I hope. Well, I hope you have fun there. I hope you have fun. But anyway, Doctor Wolf, before we start the episode, we have to ask you the two questions that normally people ask. And question number one is. How did you become a fan of the show? Ah,、uh, let's think. I first heard that、uh, My Little Pony was getting a reboot back in 2010, but it didn't seem like all that big a deal. I mean, there were tons of shows from the 80s and 90s that were getting reboots, so why would this one be any different? And then it was in 2011, I believe, that I started noticing.、Uh, MLP-related content on YouTube, and it seemed rather strange at first that people were really interested in this show. And I began to notice that some of these creations were actually rather funny and really creative and rather impressive overall. But it was still several months of every now and again I'd notice something and I'd check it out, and that, and I'd think, "Huh, that's interesting." It was still rather confusing that a lot of other people were starting to enjoy this show. I just kept seeing more and more of it. I think it was in early 2012 that I finally decided, you know, I'm going to try and understand why people seem to enjoy this show so much. And I started watching from the beginning of season two because I had heard that、uh, John Delancey was voicing the villain, and I remember. Seeing his exploits back from Star Trek: The Next Generation, and those episodes were actually rather entertaining, and I kept watching from there, going on to Lesson Zero and Luna Eclipse, and yeah, I was impressed. And over the course of the next few months, I'd watch an episode here and there, and got through the whole of the series up to that point. But it still took a long time before I actually started interacting with the fandom. I would watch what others had created, but never leave any comments, never talk to anyone, never create my own content. That wasn't until May of 2013, anyways.、Hmm. So after that, you started your own channel or something like that? Yeah, it was、uh, middle of May that、uh, Digi Brony. Had posted a video asking for other people to submit their analysis videos to him, so he could find something really good to post on Equestria Daily. Now, I had been listening to analysis and review videos for many months before that point, and I found it rather interesting all these different perspectives on 
MLP and trying to think, well, hey, I never thought about pod that quite that way before. But there was one, there was one element that I didn't notice throughout all those reviews and analysis of others. And that was the fact that no one seemed to think that Fluttershy was an interesting or inspiring character. In fact, a couple of other reviewers thought that she was just relearning the same lessons over and over and just wasn't all that intriguing. So I decided when Digibrony had posted that video asking for other people to submit their ideas, I thought, you know, I'm going to try and figure out how to make a video of my own. I have so much that I want to say. I just got to think about how to do it. I had never made a video of my own before. <laughs> but through a lot of persistence and a lot of patience, I figured out how to record my voice and how to find relevant images and how to put it all together in a very amateurish fashion. And... I thought that when I posted that video, I would maybe get a few dozen people to watch it. And I was hoping, well, maybe if a few dozen people see it, then over the course of weeks and months that other people would hear about it and start thinking about Fluttershy in a different way and start appreciating her more. I completely did not expect Digibrony to post that video on the main page at Equestria Daily only a few hours after I uploaded it. Oh my. That completely dumbfounded me when that happened. And by the next day, that video had thousands of views, and I had hundreds of subscribers, and it was overwhelming. Completely unexpected, but I thought to myself, well, I guess I better get to work on an Applejack video. And I've been making multiple videos every single week for over a year now. That's what happens when you get your content on Equestria Daily. It's a springboard website uh, that you can get a bunch of uh, views and visits on your on your content, and people allow allows people to see if your stuff is worth watching. And if it's definitely good, you won't need Equestria Daily's uh, uh, promotion anymore because people will just go to your to your videos. Uh, after they know you, and hey, look, you, you actually produce really good stuff, so of course they're going to come at your videos uh, with or without EQD's signal boosting. Good content and self-advertising. That's true, that's true. And wow, that, that's an amazing start on how you became a fan. So, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, let's see. I discussed this with my family a long while back, and they were confused at first, just like I was confused at first. And for the most part, they don't really understand why so many people enjoy this, but they understand that I have actually been improving upon many of my talents and making far better use of my free time than at any other point in my life. So they can see the good that it does and the positive influence I have over so many others. Even though they don't understand the why, they do appreciate the result. Hmm, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I think I can relate because, well, I do this podcast. Without this podcast, my free time, I got no idea what I'll be doing. Probably video games. Hmm. So what about friends? Oh, goodness. I don't really have friends in real life. I have my family and that's about it. And before I was making videos on YouTube, I didn't interact with anyone online either. So, yeah, taking part in the fandom has definitely made me a far more social than I've ever been. So that's a definite plus. Yeah, I think I can relate on this. I can relate as well. Mm -hmm. As we grow older, we have our niche. And once we uh, stick in that niche, we don't expand. And, well... To be honest, without the show, I won't be talking to foreigners. <laughs> the thing about... Uh, I don't have friends in real life either. Uh, because the, the older you get, like Norman said, the more... Uh, uh, to put it simple, the more nitpicky you get with your friendships. Because you're looking for people who have the same interests that you do, who match the personality that you have. Uh, because they are the, the ones with whom you can be yourself. And it's it's funny how thanks to this show, thanks to this fandom, you can find that kind of people online. So yeah, I can totally relate in your uh, on your case right there. Lots of friends online, not many friends in in real life. Mm, true that, true that. 
So anyway, Doctor, thank you for answering those two questions. And let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is housekeeping. And in today's housekeeping, want to meet up with the host of the MBS show? If the answer is yes, then you're in luck. Our host, the amazing and talented ah. James Cork and Norman Sanzo ah. will be attending BuckCon 2014. Meet up with them and say hello and talk to them in person. Also, James Cork and other awesome Pony Mod blogs will be hosting a panel about us Pony Tumblr blogs. Hope to see you there soon. So, James, we're going to Buck, right? I think we definitely are, Norman. We're Yay! Awesome. So, also, you're doing a Tumblr blog? I am doing a Tumblr blog panel thingy. Uh, it's the Ask Pony Tumblr blog panel that's going to... We don't know the times or the uh, place yet because they are trying to dis, uh, trying to arrange it so it doesn't collide with other panels. The, the, this is the best part of Buck. They are want to they, they, they want to give everyone the same amount of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. They don't want to have others overshadow other people. And it's like it doesn't mean that we are going to overshadow someone. It means that we are going to be overshadowed by other people. <laughs> Uh, so we don't want to have the fans uh, have to select and pick. Oh, what what panel do I go? Because then it's not fair to anybody, to the fans that want to see the the, the panels and that. So we don't know the times yet. But yes, mm. we are doing a Tumblr panel thingy, uh, and it's going to be fun. And we are going to we're going to be Mecha Shopwave, the guy who does Ask Robot Octavia, uh, the sketchy sounds on Hazel, the guys who work on Ask Britannia. Captain Horse, the guy who does Firestarter Speedfire, and myself with my movie Slate. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I can't wait to be in there asking questions on how to maintain and start a as Tumblr blog. Or with, least... with asking questions, you mean you're going to troll us like everyone that's going to in the first <laughs> rows. <laughs> well... I know someone who's going to gather an army of trolls and they're going to start <laughs> questions. <laughs> Well, it'll but, be hey, funny. That's cool. It'll be funny that, because that will be that will be funny. Yeah. No, knowing us, well, not me personally, but knowing someone, I think they will start questions to just to get a rise out of you. <laughs> I will raise my eyebrows. That is that is for certain. Eyebrows uh, will be raising. Yeah, and also if you meet me there, um, I might be bringing my first generations of buttons that I made for 2013. And yeah, if you meet me, we hang out, maybe you'll get one. Who knows? They're not awesome as the 2014 batch I made. Still haven't shipped yet, so probably won't arrive on time. But still, um, come meet me and get one. I hope I can deliver. Come and get it! Indeed. Anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. Rom, it's your time. I'm on it. In today's news time, three ponies are back. A while back, Hasbro issued a C and D letter to Shapeways, telling them to stop printing 3D ponies. Recently, Hasbro teamed up with Shapeways to bring 3D ponies back. Now we can get our 3D ponies, Dragon and Zebra, officially from Shapeways. Yay! Oh, anyone remember this back in the days when there were signs of Hasbro stopping this? So anyone get them now before they stop. I had my chance to get a derpy, and yeah, they stopped me before I could get it. So, Rom, any opinion on this? This is so awesome! And oh my god, it's so expensive. <laughs> I'm looking at a Ponyville house right now by Melinda Rose, and it's $95. But what size is it? It doesn't say the dimension. Um, it does, probably it will say. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if it's big enough to live in it, then it's going to be awesome, though. $95 oh, for a living house, I'll pay that. <laughs> There we go. I see an Applejack figure that's 95 millimeters. Not oh. sure how much that is in inches, because I'm in Europe. Mm, probably. 95 millimeters, you said? 85, 80, 65, 65, my apologies, my apologies. 65 millimeters, that is a six and a half centimeters. That is actually not a lot smaller than a, than a brushable, actually. It's almost the same size of a brushable. Anyway, Dr. Wolf, what about you? Uh, my feelings on these figurines? Yeah, because, well, um, we had... A talk earlier and you weren't into the swag that much but what about this kind of swag it's 3d and it's more personal instead of whatever hasbro is giving us i am intrigued by little figurines like this i do think they are interesting it's just i don't suppose i'm the kind of person who collects all that much hmm. i have one little fluttershy figurine and that was a gift from someone else that's about it that's the extent of my collection 
I am glad to see that there are a lot more customized figurines these days and that the quality is improving. And that shows that businesses are responding to the fans and giving more of what they want. So that's definitely a step in the right direction. You're basically saying that Hasbro is pretty much rendering everything that is like fan-made kind of like obsolete. No, I don't think the fan-made creations will ever become completely obsolete. There will always be things that the fans create that the big companies will never want to try and make themselves. There's a lot of customization out there, and there are a lot of fans who want very specific things in the merchandise they buy. But there won't be that many to merit mass producing those things. Hasbro is taking steps towards making more customized figurines, and it is a good idea. But there's always going to be a much smaller niche of people who want very specific things in the merchandise they buy, even in figurines, that Hasbro will never quite get that far, in my opinion. That is true, especially if you're talking about OCs. Like, Hasbro will never do OCs. They will do uh, uh, canon characters and all that. Uh, a couple of years ago, if I wanted to buy a plushie that was, like, show accurate and had, like, both cutie marks on both sides of its body and, like, correct colors, correct main shape and everything, I would had to go for something fan-made. I had to go to DeviantArt or eBay or somewhere in order to get something like that. Now, if I want that, on these uh, right now, I can buy uh, one of those plushies that are available in Japan. That I have two of them, and each one costed me like 10 euros. When back then I had to pay like 200 and something for a plushie that was made by the fans. And this merchandise is official. So I think that on some aspects, it's gotten to the point that you have to think, is it worth it to spend the money on something fan-made? Or should I spend something that is not as good quality but it's very close and it's like 10 times cheaper mm, I do see your point and also um, this uh, Shapeways and Hasbro deal it's something like what they did with Wheel of Fine where they hired artists or in this case they hired a group called superfanart.com to create those ponies and here's a quote from John Scotty, Chief Marketing Officer at Hasbro he said this we have been investigating 3D printing for quite a while, as have many people. What 3D printing truly empowers is the creation of artwork that maybe wouldn't make sense for mass production, but it makes sense for unique items. And you know what? It does make sense when he say it that way, because in the terms of mass production, like what Rom said, the house was $95. If you do it in mass production, how much would that cost just to ship it out? Oof, that will be super expensive, man. Or probably super cheap, and quality will be down. But if this is just targeted for, let's just say, customs, 95 bucks, eh, probably it's worth the price, because, well, it's unique, and it's not many out there. Well, whatever it is, it's another avenue to get more pony swag, and also show accurate. And also, people who are going to BronyCon, Dr. Wolf don't have any swag. So give it to him. <laughs> oh, goodness. How am I going to take it all home if people start giving me all these things? I don't know, but the, the, the thing is, you're well known, and people will give you a plushie of your OC. Uh, get another suitcase. <laughs> That's why I remember some um, celebs saying. But anyway, um, sorry for any inconvenience that I may have caused in the future for you, Dr. Wolf, but from, let's go on to the next one. In other news, San Diego Comic-Con is happening now, and the amount of pony toys that the show is on the floor is astonishing. Links can be found in the show notes below. Norman? Yay! I am shocked to see the amount of pony toys on the show floor. Like, first picture on EQD is already the super fan art that we just mentioned before. And, well, it looks good in person. And Hasbro is really trying to push, well trying to push this. It's one of their things that they really want to sell. And also um, other things like the Equestria Girls, the exclusive toys for Toy R Us, the books and their exclusive um, toys like the Maniac Equestria Girl dolls and whatsoever. Jane, what do you think? I think ever since Hasbro released the Derpy Hoops 
San Diego Comic Con exclusive in 2012. Mm -hmm. They have had a problem trying to keep up with uh, demand over supplies mm -hmm. because the, if you see those pictures back in 2012 when there is a list of all the available toys and you see like Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, Battleship, all that, they were all still available and in stock but the one for My Little Pony, it was say out of stock <laughs> and it's been out of stock for like the past three years, and it's just it's unbelievable how uh, how how fast it is. It, it's not like they don't make enough; they make the same amount for everything. We just we we just ravage their uh, their booth. It's like no, yeah, yeah. Give us the ponies. Give us the pony. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, run out. Fine. <laughs> bye. That, that is true. That is true. And to be honest, um, the derpy hoofs one was just a fluke. They thought that people would like it and who oh am I was that the first to be gone yeah they, they were they were testing the waters they were saying okay let's see how people react to this one and if they don't like wait a minute we run out okay <laughs> okay fine uh, we, we have to do another new model yeah if I remember right um, the derpy hoof one or at least what was it 2011 or 2010 no it was no it was uh, the RP hoops was 20, 2012 because it was the very first generation for a San Diego Comic Con pony exclusive mm. that Hasbro did the the one they did in 20, 2011 was still a generation 3 yeah it, it was still one of those classic G3 ponies yeah isn't it the golf pony thingy yeah, that was the Goth Pony, the one in 2011. But yeah. the one in 2012 was Derpy. It was the very first generation for uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, exclusive, San Diego Comic Con exclusive that Hasbro did. And if I remember right, the presence there for ponies was not that much. It was there, it, but it was not a lot. Yeah, it was a small booth compared to the... the they were hammering Transformers. They just released Transformers uh, Dark of the Moon in 2011. Mm -hmm. And they were promoting Battleship, which was Hasbro's big movie of 2012. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Battleship bombed, kind of funny, in, <laughs> in the box office. And then they moved into G.I. Joe. But uh, that's 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 the weird part, is that the boy staff wasn't doing as, nearly as good as the girl staff, because that, that was dominated by both Little Spet Shop and My Little Pony. And those two shows have an audience that is both male and female. It's It's something that both genders enjoy, while... I'm pretty sure that there are female fans of Transformers oh, and yeah, there are female fans of, of Battleship and G.I. Joe. But it's like we kind of trample those those other fandoms when it comes to like buying stuff. It's crazy. True, true. I, I don't know how to say this, but our fandom, we have deep pockets when it comes to merchandise. That's the other part. We like to spend our money <laughs> way too much. Yeah, we're like uh, Mc, uh, Marty McFly in Futurama. Here, take my money. <laughs> no, you, you're talking about Stephen J. Fry, no. not Marty McFly. Marty McFly is from, Marfly, Marty McFly is from Back to the Future. Oh yeah, I hate that name. By the way, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just the McFlies. Ah, my head hurts McFly! already. McFly. Yeah, but but anywho, yeah. Um, I am astonished at the amount of swag there, and wow, they're really promoting it really hard. Um, not as expensive. Uh, not as impressive this year's booth setup, but eh, you need to be there to appreciate it, I guess. I am Romeo at the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, uh, I woke up. Wait a minute. What? Oh, so okay. wait, you, you were sleep talking oh. all those topics just now? You were talking with my brain. You were not talking with me. Oh, God. Anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is Yes Time. And our guest for this week is Dr. Wolf. Hello there, Dr. Wolf. Greetings, everyone. Mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Well, I am a YouTuber. I've been creating MLP reviews and analysis and dramatic readings and uh, a show called A Moment with Dr. Wolf, where I have many different guests from various parts of YouTube come and speak their mind. That's been a popular show for many months now. I'm just the kind of guy who looks forward to hearing from you. Oh, awesome, awesome. And I do enjoy your videos, like uh, A Moment with Dr. Wolf. That really intrigues me. So uh, how did that idea came out? I believe it was in late November of 2013 that some of the other reviewers in the Skype group that I take part in, they were discussing the possibility of having Dr. Wolf 
be kind of the therapist for the fandom, the psychologist. And I had toyed with the idea for a while, but I wasn't sure how to really execute it. So it was in December that I put out a call for various artists, and there was already a number of guests who wanted to submit their own ideas for videos, and it started out with uh, Voice of Reason and Friendship is Witchcraft, (laughs) and uh, Give and Take ended up doing the artwork for that one, over 230 individual images That almost was like an animatic, the way you look at it. And that's certainly the most fun I've had making a video in quite some time. It's been keeping steady every Friday since with a new guest every week and a lot of different artists who have been volunteering their talents and some very impressive talents, I must say. That is amazing because when I watch your um, A Moment with Dr. Wolf series, it's not the thing, it's not the normal show that you would um, see it's like come sit down with me let's talk about this subject matter like what do you think of this aspect of the show what do you like about this aspect of the show let's discuss this aspect of the show it's not like let's rant about this topic well there are a few people who come to a moment with dr wolf feeling upset about one thing or another but usually we're able to reach a point where we end up learning something new from the experience. And Mm -hmm. the main purpose behind this series is to encourage discussion among the audience. I love seeing that people are having these kinds of conversations and thinking about things in a different perspective. I I do feel that. And is the segment scripted or is this off the cuff? A volunteer will submit an idea And I will think, well, would this create a lot of good discussion? And if I think it will, then I will message back and saying, hey, let's try to work this out in a Google Doc. And the way it happens is I will just say, so this person, tell me what's on your mind. (laughs) And they will start talking about anything that comes to mind. And I will start writing back. And the script is just really like a normal conversation because we are writing exactly what comes to mind in the moment. It usually takes only about an hour, maybe an hour and a half at tops to come up with two and a half to three and a half pages of script. And the conversations feel so natural because they really are. It's just typing back and forth. So in the Google Doc, that is not in the Skype call or... It's in the Google Doc, yeah. Mm. I will post a link to a Google Doc, and we'll just start writing back and forth exactly what comes to mind in the moment. So that, that's the process, and once that's done, you clean it up, um, clean up the whole thing, and make a script. So each of, um, for example, you and me will read it out and record it? There's usually very little changes to the script after we've initially written it. We may change some words here and there to make it sound a little bit better as for sentence structure, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, most everything just remains exactly how it is as we first wrote it out. Hmm, oh, okay, okay. It, I do like the process because it's a rare thing where a one-on-one discussion via Google Docs, where we type out what we feel and interacting that way. I probably haven't done it before, but it would be interesting if I could try it with someone. But yeah, um, that's an interesting way to do it. So after the script is done, um, you and the other person recording this go record the lines that were said? Indeed. We will record our dialogue and I will uh, talk to an artist who has volunteered for a project and say, hey, what do you think of this? Would you want to work on this? And they'll say, yeah, this looks really good. And I will send them both the script and the completed audio so they can listen to it as 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 well as reading it. And over the course of couple weeks or maybe a couple months depending on how extensive the artwork or animation is i'll get something worthwhile that i can put up on my channel oh that that is an interesting format so you said that this series posts every friday it's been every friday going strong for about six months Hmm. so usually you have uh, a video piled up like or in in a queue for at least a month? It depends on the videos. As of right now, I have 
uh, one, two, three, four, maybe seven videos that are already uploaded but haven't been released to the public yet. Mm, okay. Well, at least you have a queue waiting. So even though if the video would take a month or two months to finish, you at least have something to publish. That That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I usually have about seven or maybe ten at most a moment with Dr. Wolf's scripts that are having artwork done at them at any given time. Mm, okay. So, James, anything to add on or anything to ask? Uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Of course, you hang out with a lot of brony analysts, some brony reviewers, and like you talk to them, you see their stuff, you see their videos. Uh, do you ever uh, look at the stuff they produce or, or what they're doing? Do you ever look at, at, at what they do and shake your head going, no... No, don't do that. It's like that. That's that's probably a bad idea, or uh, the the total opposite, or huh? That's a great idea. I never thought of that. Like, do you ever uh, go like that? I know that there have been some videos and some ideas that are puzzling to me as to why someone would think that particular way, but I never go out of my way to try and try and say, "Hey, this is wrong." I trying to think, well, why would someone look at it this way? Yeah. Does it make sense? And more often than not, I do feel that I'm learning something new because listening to someone else's opinion that is different from my own, I'm seeking to learn something new. I'm seeking to try and think, well, I never thought about it that way. Hmm, that's cool. That's cool. I have never hidden the fact that I am very critical of uh, the sometimes – nitpicky nature of the Browning analyst community that sometimes they will get very critical or sometimes they will get very uh, apathy, not not just in their opinions, but in, in the way they word it and in the way they, they, they mention something is wrong or something is is not right and that the show should stop doing that. Uh, do you Do you think this is as spread as it looks like or is it just a minority that uh, is just bringing all of these problems to the uh, to the spotlight and not uh, focusing on both the good and the bad. I do believe that negativity in the fandom, as you describe, is in the minority because the majority of the community seems to enjoy the direction the show is being taken. I recently had a video with uh, the mysterious Mr. Enter, a moment with mm-hmm. Dr. Wolf, and we were talking about that very subject. And... I came to the conclusion that, at least in part, the reason I started making videos in the first place was because of others' negativity towards a certain character, Fluttershy. And I started thinking, well, I don't see it quite the way that they see it. And I know that there's a lot that I could say about why she's an inspiring character. And in part, that's what motivated me to start making content of my own. So... Yeah, if I hadn't heard other people's negativity about Fluttershy as a character, I don't know if I ever would have started making videos. I wouldn't have had that spark to create my own content. So, since so so since it is so uh such so small the quantity of negativity that is in this fandom and I will agree with you uh because it's like a one negative comment for every 100 positive comments. Uh, and because this negativity has somehow seeped into uh, some of the levels of the brony analyst community, do you think that next season, instead of having more brony analysts, we are going to have less brony analysts? I think I am seeing that part of the community continue to grow. And I do believe that the majority of the reviewers and analysts in the brony fandom are more on the positive side of things. I honestly believe that, yeah, there are going to be more people who try their hand and maybe come up with their own intriguing ideas. I think the community will grow by next season. All right. That's good. That is good. Uh, I will be supporting that uh, from, from my very little uh, spot because it, it, it can get very discouraging when there is a new episode coming out. It's so good, it's so great. Then go to YouTube and a bunch of videos about how this episode sucks and what is wrong with this episode and why this writer should quit 
the show forever and never come back. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, why do you have the need to, to be so vitriolic about something? I guess it's the, inter- the nature of the internet as it is. That's true. That's true. Yep. And James, I think we're on that bandwagon too. <laughs> on, on where? The reviewing ba- bandwagon. We are, we are, but the way that I see the way we review it, we are obnoxiously optimistic, positive, and like loving towards uh, the show. Where even the episodes that we were feeling like iffy about it, we we loved for uh, aspects and different details. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> well, um, there's still the Fluttershy micro, so let's see what happens there. I wonder what's gonna happen on that one. Yes, uh, that, that is gonna be interesting. But anywho, uh, Dr. Wolf, um, you mentioned earlier that you do fanfic readings, yes? Yes, I have been doing that for a while. So how did you get started with that, and how do you select your fanfics? I suppose one of the big reasons I started making content in the first place was because for years people had been telling me that I have a really good voice and that I should get into radio or TV in some way, and I just couldn't think how I could do that. I never knew for sure whether I could captivate an audience with my voice. And when I finally got started on YouTube, yeah, part of the purpose was to improve upon my voice work. And doing dramatic readings is an excellent way to give some variety to my voice work and keep my tone consistent and work on being able to speak for lengthy periods of time while being pleasant to listen to and even adding some different kinds of voices. As far as uh, choosing fan fictions to do dramatic readings of, I have to pick things that are short, preferably something that's less than 5,000 words. And I want to pick something that makes me think makes the story memorable, I suppose. I want to encourage good discussion after I have that dramatic reading and hear other people's thoughts. And also try to act it out? Yeah. I will agree with them. You have a wonderful voice. (laughs) That is true. That is true. Thank you kindly. So... um, Saying it like it is, man. True, true. So, guys, when are we going to do our own dramatic reading? (laughs) I am not doing rom- dramatic readings with Romu here. He will put me to sleep. I swear, I swear. No, for real. He was reading a fanfic during one of my streams, and he ended up putting the entire stream to sleep. Oh I am not joking. I was falling asleep when he was... The, the thing is that Romu has a very soft, sultry voice. He has the voice of someone who will tell you a bedtime story. <laughs> Good times, good times. No, not good times. I had to work and you made me waste 30 minutes. I swear. Please have some sleep. No, shut up. I don't need to sleep. I'm an android. Oh, boy. (laughs) Well, uh, that project flew out the window before it started. Uh, So, Dr. Wolf, I also noticed that you also do episode reviews. So, how's that going for you? I did end up reviewing every episode in season four and releasing those reviews on the same day Mm -hmm. as the episode aired. I did that for most of them. I did end up completing all of them over time. Uh, It's just that nowadays I feel like, you know, I got to add some variety to my work. I did reviewing throughout the entirety of season four. I got to keep things going with some different kind of works. So I've been doing dramatic readings and more a moment with Dr. Wolf and more general MLP analysis. I'll likely get back to making reviews when I feel that passion coming back. Hmm, okay. Sometimes reviewing is not easy, and if you don't feel like it, it won't come out nice. All right. So you're most well-known for your analyst videos, especially your character spotlight or character studies. So when you pick a character, how do you approach um, that subject matter? Like talking about Fluttershy, talking about Applejack. How do you approach it? Well, I wanted to approach it in a way that other people haven't before. I mean, my very first video was Fluttershy's weakness is part of her greatest strength. It was showing others that, hey, Fluttershy does have these weaknesses, but it's what 
those are what make her character so interesting and inspiring when she shows that she's slowly but surely overcoming those weaknesses and even using those weaknesses to make great strengths in her life. And in the case of Applejack, I believe that it is her tragedy that is part of her greatest strength. In the episodes that her parents are no longer part of the picture and they've explained in via Twitter that Applejack's parents have indeed passed on. And I believe that that strength in her character, her dedication, her hardworking ethic, her honesty and integrity, and the fact that I personally believe that she is the closest thing to a mother that Apple Bloom has those are what have given her such great strengths in her life, and that's why she's an inspiring character. Hmm. So you try to look at it as a whole, uh, understanding each character for their strengths and weaknesses, then? Indeed. That will explain episodes like Some Pony to Watch Over Me, why Applejack is suddenly so uh, overprotective with Apple Bloom. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I, I explained yeah. that during my review of that episode because, yeah... It's not so much that Applejack doesn't really trust Apple Bloom to do things on her own. It's she more about the, the fact that she's been kind of a mother figure for so long, and it's so hard to let go of that and yeah. see that this little filly she's taken care of for so long is starting to become independent. I think that was the reason why she decided to become so overprotective and so... Uh, <laughs> So excessive about it, I suppose. Oh. That's one of the that's one of the reasons why I like the episode so much. That's exactly how I was seeing it as I was watching it. I think we've all been there before. <laughs> I didn't understand the negativity that came afterwards uh, with the whole "Oh, is Applejack freaking out? She's losing her mind," like Twilight did in Lesson Zero. This is so original. The show stuff has run out of ideas. <sighs> there is a reason why Applejack is like that, guys. Come on. I don't think that was a cut and paste kind of situation there. To me, it was Apple Bloom's first time without anyone being in the house. And for anyone who's been in that situation before, well, yeah, you you know how it feels. Like parents calling every five minutes. Hello, how are you? How are you? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, is everything okay? Is everything okay? You haven't set the cat on fire again, didn't you? Oh, okay, good, good. Okay. Did you set the, the dog on fire, though? Oh, neither that. Okay, good, good. Yeah. What about Grandpa? I heard you didn't set Grandpa on fire. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been there before, we've been there before. But still, but still. Anywho, besides the dramatic readings, the A Moment with Dr. Wolf series, and also your reviews, um, what else do you do on your channel that um, screams, this is Dr. Wolf's work? Oh, well, those are the things that stand out the most, honestly. Uh, I occasionally have podcasts with the other reviewers. I used to do reviews of MLP fan fictions. Mm. Um, I have come up with more than a dozen videos about uh, ideas for future episodes in MLP. So, yeah, there's some variety here and there. Mm, okay. So um, I do remember that you have this one project, right, that involves a certain... Game Valve game, right? Yes, I am currently working on a Team Fortress 2 slash Brony Reviewer crossover video. And there's been a lot of positive response on that. And I'm very much looking forward to having everything put together. We're having animators working on it right now, submitting their demos on we're going to choose who to add to the team. But it's still going to be a while before that comes out. Uh, well, I can't wait because after looking at the newest Team Fortress 2 CG video, I can't wait to see what you're going to do because mm, I like ponies, I like the Brony reviewers, and I do like Team Fortress 2, so it's going to work. <laughs> Perfect. Should be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Seriously, I can't wait. I wish I can just go to the future and just look at it now. <laughs> <laughs> Give it time. Oh, yay. So, um, I think that's about the questions we have for you, Dr. Wolf. And once again, thank you for coming on and, well, sharing your stories with us. It was really fun. It's great to be here. Thanks again.
I hope you enjoy yourself because, well, I try to do my best. Anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shout outs. And my first shout out goes to you, Dr. Wolf. Thank you for coming on and, well, being an awesome guest. Thanks again, yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And my second one goes to Five Iron Brony. Thank you for getting me in touch with Dr. Wolf. Without you, I got no idea how to. <laughs> and also, thank you to James and Rom. Thank you for being here, man. My pleasure. They forced me to do it. <laughs> Shh, no one should know. Get me out of the basement. I want to see my family again. <laughs> <laughs> you will, after you tell me who your shout-out goes to. <laughs> uh, my shout-out goes to you, Norman, uh, for not having not fired me yet. Uh, I don't know how can you cope with me and my stupidity. It's amazing. Uh, a big shout out to uh, Doctor Wolf for coming a second time. Oh wait a minute, no, that's what's that was the deja vu. I completely broke the illusion uh, for coping with our own uh, stupidity as a group and uh, the dirt page and everything. And and for answering my question so kindly, uh, you could have told me to get out, but no, you you, you didn't. You are such a polite person. Thank you so much for not uh, for not getting mad at us during the the interview segment. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and uh, finally, thank you, Romo, for not put, putting, a, to, putting us to sleep with your voice. This is very kind of you not making us fall asleep. I ran thank out you. of fan fictions to read. <laughs> good, good, good. That, that's the first step. That's the fir- no, that's the second. The first one is admitting that you have a problem. That's, that's good. That's good. And, Rom, what about you? Shout out to my mother. Hi, Mom! <laughs> Yay! Any more? No, that's it. And Dr. Wolf, what about you? Any shout-outs to give out to? I think I'm good for now. Awesome, awesome. And I forgot to ask you this. How can people find you? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, look for uppercase DRW, lowercase OLF, 001. Uh, you can also find me on DeviantArt, uh, Dr. Wolf, 010. Awesome, awesome. I'll be sure to put that in the show notes. Anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mvshowgmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you well, links will be provided in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at mvshow. Sweetie, but we'll tweet about editing the show and stuff. And as for me, you can find me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And James? You can find me on Twitter, even though I barely use Twitter nowadays, but you can find me on Twitter at James Cork, James Lower Dash Cork. And you can find me on DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com and check my Ask Pony blog at askmovieslate.tumblr.com. All righty then, Romo? You can find me at Twitter at RomeWaltZ69, on my Tumblr, I am Rolicious.tumblr.com, and my Deviant, Rolicious.deviantart.com. Awesome. You can also find him in your dreams. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> and also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook. You can catch us on PonyvilleLive.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I don't know who I have been. I have to look into that. BRB. Bye. <laughs> I am Romuald. And I am Dr. Wolf. And we'll see you guys next week. I have a strange feeling of deja vu. Does it ever happen to you guys? Probably. I don't know. It's probably probably nothing. Yeah, probably. Every Saturday night, man. Every Saturday night. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Prison down the street, strutting my stuff. My daddy buys me things that's never enough. I pretend I don't know that they're there. Nobody gets me and I really don't care. It should be against the law for me to look as good. I'm teenage royalty and man, I'm so misunderstood. If you know what I mean If you ask me, I think they look a little green I'm well aware that nothing is free But my daddy worked for everything and gave it all to me Yeah, it should be against the law for me to look this good I'm teenage royalty and man, I'm so misunderstood I think I got some friends, I don't give a f- I'm never out of money, so I'm never out of love Speak
Just a princess. I deserve nothing but the best. I won't apologize for getting what I want. You're the glitz, you're the glamour, when you're the death you talk. Oh! Don't hate me, cause I'm beautiful. Don't hate me, cause I speak true. Don't hate me, cause I'm beautiful. And don't you hate me, cause my blood is blue. They say that money is the root of all evil. They must be jealous. Anywho, um, besides um, reviewing the episodes, the moment with Doctor Who, sorry, um, Doctor Wolf series, and also <laughs> Jerk. Wrong series, Norman. <laughs> Jerk. Um, <clears throat> Doctor. Uh, right, give me a second. Uh, three, two, one.